Good morning. Welcome to our service this morning. Would you please stand? I'll pray and then we'll begin our time of worship together. Father, we thank you for the gift of this new day. We ask that you would come and inspire our hearts as we seek to meet with you and with each other. In Christ's name, amen. Please remain standing for opening hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom. There's one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's fault to us. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all. Please remain standing as we continue in worship.
beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name.
Lord, as we turn our eyes to you, we thank you that you're in the business of restoring hope to hearts. And so even now, Lord, as we've sung and as we are about to hear your word read to us, as we're about to celebrate baptism and come to your table, we lift you those here with us now and those near and dear to us in need of hope. We pray, Lord, that you would come with fresh uh, inspiration, that you would touch our hearts and shape them and fill us anew, we pray. Amen. Amen. A prayer for today, All Saints Day, which is the eighth anniversary of this church. I know, big moment. I better get this prayer right. Let's pray. Almighty God, you've knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Do be seated for our readings. And uh, youth, you may join uh, your classes upstairs. Today's lesson is from Revelation. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. 
For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let them praise his name and dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbre and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praise of God be in their throat and the Jewish sword in their hand. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To inflict on them the judgment decreed, this is glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it is in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray together. Lord God, on this uh, day where we celebrate all saints, when we get to celebrate baptism, I pray that you would hold before us the vision of the beginning and the end, the beginning of this faith journey of those being baptized into your body, but also the vision, Lord, of Revelation 7, of where you are taking us, where you are taking us to worship you before your throne always and forever, and that we will be comforted by you our heavenly lamb, our heavenly shepherd, Lord Jesus. And it is in your name we pray, amen. Uh, please be seated. My name is Chris Myers. I'm one of the, the priests here. Welcome to St. Bart's. As Dave mentioned, um, this is the eighth anniversary. This week marks the eighth anniversary of weekly worship at St. Bartholomew's Anglican Church. Um, some of you have been here from the very beginning, um, and it's an incredible thing uh, because I say this on this anniversary all the time, most church plants don't make it. It's just the cost of doing business of trying to start new things. Um, most church plants don't make it. And here we are eight years in. Um, and that is an amazing testament to God and what he's doing through us as a community here in East Dallas. And I love marking that anniversary with All Saints Day because All Saints Day, really on November 1st, but we're celebrating it today, is this reminder of all those who have gone before, all those who have been faithful, all those who have said yes to Jesus throughout history and make and mark an unbroken chain of faithful witness in all times, in all places, and in all circumstances, that Jesus is the Lord of history. And that's the vision of Revelation chapter seven before us, and I, I want us and I pray that the Holy Spirit would make that vision uh, tangible to us. That that's our hope. That even now, those saints who have gone before are before the throne of God. And they are worshiping him. And their suffering and strife is complete. And their victory is won. And then they are spurring us on and calling us to that place as well. That's the great cloud of witnesses that the writer of the Hebrews talks about. And I think especially when we think about 
the circumstances of our own lives or the place we find ourselves in a moment of history where things feel bleak, things feel pretty dark, things feel right on the edge. With wars all over the world and a coming election year, I know many of us are bracing for what, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen to our country? What's, what's gonna happen? There's this moment early on in the Lord of the Rings where Frodo has basically come to understand some little piece of what this ring is that he has and how the evil that it has wrought over many thousands of years. And Gandalf is giving him a sense of what is coming for him. And Frodo says, I wish it need not have happened in my time. And Gandalf responds to him and says, so do I, and so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. There is wisdom in that. We don't choose the times we live in. We don't choose the problems of our age. And yet, this is the time that God has called us to live as individuals and as a community. And that's why I love All Saints Day, because it, again, reminds us that there is a countless multitude, as John says in Revelation. You cannot number this tri- these from every tribe, tongue, and nation, a countless multitude of people who have struggled, who have suffered, who have been perplexed by the times they found themselves in, but they nonetheless remained faithful. And that is why we remember those who have gone before. We hold before of those who have fought the good fight and finished the race. We don't just remember them, though. We try to picture them as a way to spur us on, and this is what Revelation holds before us. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. They hold Palm branches is a sign of victory. They wear white robes. I dress the part. As a sign that they've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. That's the vision. And we need that vision because it stirs hope in us and it encourages us. And it reminds us of those who have been faithful. Um, My doctoral work was focused on a particular 20th century Catholic theologian who has the wonderful name of Hans Urs von Balthasar. It sounds like a character in Harry Potter, but he was a real dude uh, who lived till 1988. And one of the, he said many things that have challenged me and, and enriched me, but he has this statement about saints that I think is so helpful for us. <coughs> he says this, the spirit meets the burning questions of the age with an utterance that is the key word, the answer to the riddle. This is never in the form of an abstract statement, almost always in the form of a new concrete supernatural mission. A new concrete supernatural mission. The creation of a new saint whose life is a presentation to his own age of the message that heaven is sending to it. A person who is here and now the right and relevant interpretation of the gospel who is given to this particular age as its way of approach to the perennial truth of Christ, how else can life be expounded except by living? How does the gospel become articulate in the world? Through people. Through the power of the Spirit working through the individual lives of people in particular times and places. And what Balthazar is saying is that God in his mercy in different times and places, raises up particular people and particular communities as an answer to the perplexity and suffering of that time and that place. The life of God and the power of the Spirit becomes articulate in a given time and place through the lives of God's people. Yeah, we have news to share, we have information, there's propositions to the gospel, but it only becomes meaningful and concrete through the lives of individuals. And you can think of those people in your own life, if you were sitting here, 
who have made the faith real to you, who have manifested the love of God to you, not as an abstraction, but in real eyes and faces and hands of love. And on the most basic level, that is what a saint is. We think about saints on these two different levels, just the reality that that Paul talks about, that all those who have the Spirit are saints because we have been sanctified, we've been set apart, we've been called holy ones. But then also this truth that Balthazar talks about, that these, there are these extraordinary people that the church remembers and memorializes, memorializes and calls saints because they've made the life of Christ articulate in the world, in the way that they lived. And it's important for us, even just in our own lives, to have those people that we go back to, whether it's a grandmother, or an aunt, or an uncle, or a pastor, or someone even in history. Just as as an example from history, I think of John Wesley, a founder of the Methodist movement, who met the challenge of the industrialization of England, this time of uproarious change and transformation where an agrarian society becomes an industrial society and the poverty and pollution, everything that came along with that. And Wesley and those who followed him moved into the cities and they declared the gospel to the poor. And there are some historians who even say that England was spared a revolution like the one in France because of Wesley, because of the gospel becoming articulate in his life and through those who followed in his wake. I want to talk about a particular saint who's important to me. Um, Just in my own story, and especially over the last few years as I've been doing my doctoral work, um, I did my doctoral work in Durham, England, which is in the northeast of England on the coast. And that part of the country is very special and important for the life of Christianity in England. Um, what we would call the Celtic tradition. And this particular guy is named Cuthbert, St. Cuthbert. And he lived from 634 to 687, almost 1,400 years ago. But he was faithful in his time. He lived on this island called Lindisfarne, the Holy Island. And when we uh, went over for my graduation, my family and I, and I can only put it this way, we took a pilgrimage to go to Lindisfarne, and I'd, I'd had it in my heart to do that for six years, and it just never happened, because it was just a day of travel to get there, planes, trains, and automobiles. I mean, we were on a boat, and me and boats don't get along, so I really wanted to go there. And we go to this island, and there are the ruins of this priory that this other saint, St. Aidan from Iona, was called to found this monastery, and Cuthbert came after him, And he, Cuthbert, would come, he would go to the island, he would run the monastery, but then he would come back to the mainland of England and he would just walk around and he would proclaim the gospel. And he would heal people in Jesus' name. And in Durham Cathedral, which is where he's buried, you can go into the basement and you can see his coffin. And it's this beautiful, hand-carved, Anglo-Saxon piece of art. And barely any of that exists anymore because it's hard to preserve that stuff. And in the 1800s, they, they found a compartment in the coffin, and they opened it, and they found St. Cuthbert's stole, a piece of fabric from the 7th century of him walking around in one of these, proclaiming the gospel. And they found uh, his pectoral cross, which is now the symbol of the Dur- Cathedral of Durham, and they found his portable altar, because he would do open-air services. If you've seen those beautiful stone Celtic crosses, at that time, these, these men, they would go and they would do services in the open air and he would celebrate the, the Eucharist with his portable altar. And when I was at my graduation, I'm sitting in Durham Cathedral and I'm 30 feet away from where this guy is buried. And the reason that there's a cathedral there that's been there for a thousand years is because this man lived in a transformative, transformative way that the life of Christ became articulate to Northeast England. My dad, I kept talking to my dad about all this stuff while we were on this trip, and he was like, well, you know our family's from this part of the world. I'm like, no, I didn't know that. That would have been helpful to know. 
because I feel a kinship to this place. I feel kinship to this person. But he's just one story. He's just one person. There's so many others. And I think we all need those people in our minds who we hold on to that remind us that the life of Christ can become articulate to the world in dark times and dark places. You may think of someone like Bonhoeffer. I often think of someone like Bonhoeffer. In Nazi Germany, able to bear witness to the truth of Christ, even when so much of the church had been enfolded into the darkness of the Third Reich, he bore witness to the truth of God. Who are those people for you? Maybe it is a family member. Maybe it is a youth pastor. Maybe it's a young life leader. Someone who made the life of Christ articulate to you and for you. Just over the course of the week, I would encourage you to draw those people to mind and give thanks for their lives. What we'll do at communion is before we celebrate communion, we will read a list of names that you've given us of people to remember. And it's just a small, small reflection of the numerous names we could read, the multitude of names, that we're here because people were faithful. We're here because the life of Christ became articulate through individuals' lives. So in closing, I would say that we would pray that the love of Christ would become articulate through our own lives and that we would be grateful people who remember those who've gone before us. But I would also challenge you to pray that God would continue to raise up radiant and extraordinary figures who meet and answer the questions of their age. The church needs that, the world needs that. Those transformative individuals who radiate the love of Christ in, in just an intensified way. And they are gifts from God and we pray that God would raise those people up. I pray that God would raise those people up from our midst. We're about to see two children baptized. They're going to be marked out for the life of the church. We pray for them. We pray that we would be faithful in a way that makes the gospel articulate so that they live into the promise of the vows taken on their behalf. And I pray that we would be filled with hope of the vision of God's throne room where the saints are even now praising him. And that when we come to the table and when we pray that prayer, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and we sing it with the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, those saints who've gone before us, that, we, that that veil would be thin for us today and that we would meet with our Lord Jesus Christ in a unique and powerful way at his table. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for those who've gone before us. We remember them even now. We draw to mind those people in our own lives who have made the faith real to us. Those whose lives was, were articulate with the gospel, with the love of God. We thank you for them, Lord. I thank you for this place. I thank you for eight years of weekly worship. I thank you for your provision that we can bear witness in our own small way to these truths. And we pray that you would raise up these extraordinary and radiant individuals who bear witness to your love. I pray for those about to be baptized, Lord, that even as we witness those being washed in this water, buried with you in baptism, raised to new life, that we would be reminded of our own baptisms, that you've done the same for us and raised us up with you. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the lamb who shepherds us, who nourishes us, who wipes away every tear from our eyes. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Pardon me. Thank you, Chris. Uh, In a moment, why don't we invite, actually, why don't we now invite the families of Josephine and Nora to come up for baptism. Parents and godparents, if you're present, come on up. Um, And let me explain to you in uh, shorthand what we're about to do. We are about, as Chris said, come up on stage. This is their moment, your moment, everyone's moment. And um, 
we are about to baptize these children, and in a way, we are going to pencil in on their behalf what we believe. And later on, as they grow up in the faith, they will then have to ink these oaths in for themselves. And um, that's what we're about to do. We all have a part to play in this this morning. You should have your words with you. There'll be a moment where the congregation will be asked a question. Will you support uh, these children and families? And the hope is that you will be convincing. All right, so we need a convincing we will from you or we'll have to do it again. All right, so congregation, stay awake. Don't make a mistake, and we'll go from there. We ready? Children, come on in. So as we come to uh, baptism, oh, wonderful, you're all set up perfectly. Uh, if you've come as part of the baptismal uh, entourage, uh, feel free to come to the front seats. As you can see, we've saved them for you, or nobody dares sit in the front. So if you want to get a better view, come on down, and we'll go from there. All right, parents and uh, families and godparents, do you present these children to receive the sacrament of baptism? Wonderful. Uh, on behalf, let me stand over here so I'm not in the way. Uh, on behalf of these children, do you desire to be baptized? I do. Will you be responsible for seeing that these children are brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help them to grow into the full stature of Christ? All right, now we go for the threefold renunciation and the threefold affirmation. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Congregation, this is for you. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ. Well done. Let us join with these persons who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Would you please stand? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ by faithfully serving others through the ministries of St. Bartholomew's Anglican Church? Will the congregation please sit or kneel as we continue in prayer? Let us now pray for these persons being baptized. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. 
Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized in the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your Son, Jesus Christ, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship these children who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Get everything ready here. Josephine. All right. There we are. I got you. Oh, there's the arm. I know. I know. I know. Shh. It's okay. It's okay. Josephine, I baptize you now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. Josephine, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Just so y'all can see. Yeah. Perfectly comfortable on stage. I'd say we've got saint material right here. There you are. Well done. There we go. Well done. Nora. Here we go. There we are. How are you? Okay. Nora, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nora, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. All right, let's see. Here they are. Don't worry, they will pay for your college education. <laughs> yeah, there we are. In faith. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you by water and the Holy Spirit. You have bestowed upon these, your servants, the forgiveness of sin and cover them with your grace and love. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Will the congregation please stand? Let us welcome the newly baptized, saying, We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Amen. Round of applause. Well done. Well done, y'all. We have, there we are. It's nice to see you up front. Yeah, I know, man. Finally up front. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. Now, as we stand, may, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another a sign of God's peace.
Do take a seat. Well done, everyone. I do want to encourage anyone who would like to uh, make themselves, uh, avail themselves of the uh, first class seating with all the extra leg room at the front, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, the in-flight entertainment leaves a bit to be desired, but do feel free to spread out. Welcome to St. Bart's. Uh, welcome, especially if you're visiting as part of the uh, baptism entourage. It's great to have you uh, with us as You've already heard from Chris. My name's Dave. It's great uh, to be here with you today. And uh, what a lovely uh, day it is. Uh, if you are new and um, really when it comes to Dallas, you're spoiled for, uh, spoiled for choices when it comes to good churches. But if you are looking and uh, you'd like to learn more about what this place is, can I encourage you to tear off the back page of your bulletin and to fill in the details. We call this our connection card. And then as the offering plate goes by, just pop that in and uh, with their details, maybe a prayer request, and uh, we'll get praying and we'll be in touch with you shortly. A couple of announcements to share with you, which is that coming up, we have a party, the Advent wreath party, which is we try to get into the uh, Christmas party season before anyone else does. Uh, and so we will have on the evening of the 3rd of December uh, a party here at 5 p.m. Uh, where we'll uh, have fire pits outside and just have a great, great time. We, there are more details about that in your bulletin. Also, our next public theology evening is coming up on the 27th of November, not too far away, called The Love That God Is, which might be a great read after, uh, depending on how your Thanksgiving has gone. Um, I'm sure it'll all be wonderful, but for some, um, you know, it's always good to have forever refresher. Uh, and then, uh, that was meant to be funny, but clearly it was not, so uh, I will persevere. And then we have, we did it for the first time last year, we're doing it again, we're already busily underway. Our Festival of Lessons and Carols will be on the 10th of December here in the, the church. Uh, it was excellent, it's going to be even more better uh, this year. Um, and now, uh, can I introduce someone to you? Jeremy, come join me. Um, Jeremy Radcliffe um, has been, uh, you've been here since the beginning. Let me get you a microphone. Hey, Jeremy, you and your family have been here since the beginning? We were talking about that last night. We think so. Close, yeah. close well, to. it's only eight years, so that doesn't age Somewhere you in at there. all. Yeah. Yep. Other Anglican churches that say you've been here from the beginning refers to the Norman period, but never mind. <laughs> um, Jeremy serves, he has a day job, so he doesn't work for us, <laughs> but uh, serves uh, the vestry and the church as our treasurer. So he mm. is the, they don't trust me to count anything. Because there's usually, you know, an extra 20% to everything. So we have people we trust who've been trained how to use spreadsheets and who know how to count. And Jeremy is that person. Yes. So Jeremy, tell us, as a person who uh, you helped us set the budget for this year, we're about, uh, we're approaching Christmas. Yep. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about where we are? And uh, as we approach the end of the calendar year, what we're looking, for, looking towards. Yes. Um, so I actually wrote down some thoughts this morning because I didn't know exactly what I was going to be asked to say. So uh, first of all, we have so much to be thankful for. It's interesting that we're celebrating this week eight years at St. Bart's, uh, our anniversary, our birthday as a church. And so we're very grateful for that. On Friday, there was an email that was sent out detailing the growth that we've seen um, in the last year as a church as well as the financial need that we're experiencing right now. Um, I think we had talked about um, the vestry, which is essentially lay people within the church who've been selected to kind of act as the governing body in terms of how we handle finances. Uh, into this, the beginning of this fiscal year, we set a budget. We, along with the clergy, praying about, hey, where are we going as a church? What's the growth look like? And sometimes when you're a new church, you don't always know how that's going to look or what that looks like or how you even budget or forecast. But we felt like with great prayer um, that God gave us a specific number based on the growth that we've seen. And so if in, you have the most recent financial report that's in the bulletin, you can turn to the back of that. Um, and you can see as at the end of the month, September, our expenses are right in line with what we were expecting. So we're, we're 
targeting exactly where we are expenses. However, in terms of our giving, it has uh, lagged um, quite a bit in terms of what we were projecting. And our ex expectation is that that gap is going to grow again once we get updated financials for October, potentially by another $20,000. So um, at this moment as a church, uh, on this eighth anniversary, we're at a pivotal moment. And uh, our ministries are growing. Our financial giving needs to match um, that growth we're experiencing, or we're going to have to make some financial changes as a church. Um, we're, we're setting a faith goal filled to raise, and you should have gotten an email about this, of 300000 by the end of the year. That's a big goal for us, uh, but we feel like that's going to help shore up some of the, the deficit we've experienced so far, as well as in preparation at the beginning of the year, there tends to be a drop in seasonality in terms of giving. So that's kind of where that number is coming from. So uh, we're not just asking for funds. We're inviting you to invest in the transformation of lives and what God has done here at St. Bart's. That's really the heart of what we're asking for. And if you call this your church home, uh, we ask you, if, you're not, if tithing is not a part of your regular uh, spiritual discipline, we'd say consider it, pray about it as a family. If it is, and if you are already giving we'd ask you to consider, hey, is this a time for us as a family to potentially give more? Um, can, we, can we give more? Is this what God's calling us to? So that may have been more than what you were asking for. No, that's great. <clears throat> Thank you, Jeremy. Yep. Um, Jeremy is a saint because, uh, you know, he gets all the responsibility without any of the compensation. So uh, well done. That's my pleasure. Um, and um, um, I would say just about that number... It's normal in the nonprofit sector to expect to raise 25% of your operating budget at the end of the calendar year. And so that's where a lot of that is. And so um, this is the Lord's church and we have followed him thus far and we're excited to yep. see what he will do. So let's pray, shall we? Yep. Shall I pray? Yep. Would you like paper, rock, scissors? No, I'll pray. You pray. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> we don't actually do that here, but let me pray. Lord, thank you on this eighth anniversary for all that you were doing in us and through us. We thank you especially for the children's ministry, which just continues to grow. And we pray for our children that they would be nurtured and continue to be nurtured in the faith to become uh, these transformative influences in our world. And would you lead us and guide us uh, in all aspects of our lives. And we thank you for those who serve on our vestry and especially for Jeremy and all that he does for us. Would you bless him and bless them in Jesus' name, amen. I was just gonna say one last thing. If you have questions about giving or how to do that or even just wanna talk to me after the church, I'll stick around for a little bit and be happy to talk to anybody about that. Thank you, Jeremy. <clears throat> thank you. He said it much better than I would have, so thank you again, Jeremy. We come now to the Lord's table, um, to Holy Communion, and this is the Lord's table, as I said, it is not an Anglican table, and so you are welcome to come and receive regardless of your denominational background. There'll be three stations at the front, and as you, four stations at the front, and as you come forward, place your hands like this, and you will receive the bread, which is dipped in the wine, placed into your hands, uh, if you would like a gluten-free option, place your hands like this. If for whatever reason you uh, would rather not receive, just come forward, place your hands like this, and we will pray a blessing over you. So as we come to the Lord's table, mindful of those who've gone before us, mindful of the work that he is doing in us and through us, can I encourage you to humble yourselves under the hand of Almighty God. He will lift you up to cast all your burdens unto him, for he cares for you.
this holy communion for the glory of God and in remembrance of these and others who have gone before us. Claudette Cherry, Larry Roberts, Marsha Martin Ratkovic, Dale Darnell, Sherry Olmstead, Roger Jaffe, Aaron Allen, Lorraine Graves, Matthew Vargas, Leo Thames, Jane Athey, Michelle Thames, Mary McElroy, Raymond Brigham, Paul and Mary Stoller, William and Genevieve Young, Paul and Mary Hazlitt, Dean Thompson, Jim Cheney, Jack Cheney, Harolyn Allred, John Miller III, Austin Udaley, Juliet Rose Fisher, Walter Leba, Francis Catherine Lewis, Samuel Larson, Cecilia Larzabal, Grandpa Frank, Ken Quinn, Rachel Wheeler, Nelson Kaszczewski, and Fred Alderson Smitham. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. Now with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven.
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share one bread. Friends, these are the gifts of God, and they are given for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ.
was borrowed for three days. His body there would not remain. Our God has robbed the grave. Oh, our God has robbed the grave. Praise you, Lord Jesus, for the victory that we have in your name, that you have conquered Satan, sin, and death, that you've trampled death by death. And those saints before your thrones wave the palm branches as a sign of your victory. Help us to go forth in your love and declare that victory of your resurrection to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Are there any birthdays this week that we can pray for? Here we go. Come on down. Now, whose birthday is it? Both. Three and one. All right. Okay, everybody extend a hand of blessing as we pray for these birthday uh, boys and girls. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand, <laughs> comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may thy peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. I think it still took. I think it's fine. Happy birthday. Why don't we stand together as we pray this prayer for mission. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say, amen. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Remain standing for our closing hymn.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.